All right, let's get Mr. Echidna's review analysis about Awakened Amelia versus Pandora. Give it to me. Happy ReZero Day is a phrase Woo! I haven't said in quite a while, because at this point, it becomes more of an oxymoron every single episode. Amelia's tragic backstory has been getting sadder and sadder every week, and Pandora yep. is truly one of the most evil characters I've ever seen in anime. I mean, seriously, how messed up do you have to be in the head to make someone bitch slap their own daughter? <laughs> By the way... I love that scene. Something about Amelia getting slapped like that was hilarious. It's fucked up, but child abuse in anime will always be funny to me. By the way, in Greek mythology, Pandora was the source of all the world's evil, so hopefully her name at least makes sense to everyone. Interesting. The Pandora myth is a kind of theodicy, addressing the question of why there is evil in the world. Um, she is also known as the progenitor of the Witch of Envy as well, right? And if you think about it, a theme like this, like I was trying to wonder like, what kind of greater reason is there for Pandora unleashing the Witch of Envy into the world? Because now we're thinking, I think that Pandora gaslit Satala and whatever happened with p potentially her lover back in the past dying, which I still think that was like a fucking a version of Super or some shit. Maybe Pandora fucking gaslit uh, Satala manipulated her. And it's like, why would she do that? Did she just simply want destruction of the world? Because like before this too, the previous episode, she was looking at Juice and Fortuna suffering and she would be like, wow, this is amazing. Truly love dedication, right? And she's like crying tears, but it's like, is this like a non-human trying to understand like, sorry, a witch trying to understand non-witch emotions or is she just simply a sadist that just wants to see the destruction of the world? Maybe this is a good enough reason that she just wants just the destruction of the world. She just, she just evil as fuck for no reason. Everyone, but even after four also, do you, what do you think Pandora's box is? Because like Pandora's box is a term that everyone knows. Um, it, it, it refers to like if you open the box, then it's too late, right? It's like, an, it's like an irreversible act. You never want to open Pandora's box because then the fucking the genie's out of the lamp kind of situation. Uh, do you think Juice's sloth factor <laughs> was Pandora's box? I don't think so. But, uh, interesting thing to think about. Makes sense to everyone. But even after Fortuna's death left us in utter shock and despair, Amelia's tragic- Could be the seal. Pandora's box could be that seal. Maybe, yeah. Tragic ...history was followed by a glimmer of hope. Not only did Amelia pass her trial, but she also passed her blunt to Betelgeuse. <laughs> red Eye Zaza, or should I say Red Eye Juice? Betelgeuse. By friendly fire. I used to think this anime was just about Subaru suffering, but literally every other character seems to have suffered just as much, and most of them more. have devastatingly tragic backstories to the point that I'm immediately prepared to cry as soon as they start showing me a flashback. It's pretty sad, man. And I think Nagatsuki Tape, I think it's been... Uh, someone said that he loved... Like that one video where we saw that video essayist guy talk about fucking Hamlet and Shakespeare and plays and tragedies about how Nagatsuki Tape is also inspired by those Shakespeare and tragedies. If you think about it, I think he loves that shit. I think he loves tragedy and is implementing in pretty much every fucking backstory. As soon as they start showing me a flashback. We finally got the new opening, and I've always been a big fan of ReZero's music choices, and this song did not disappoint me. It's catchy, and it sounds like something I'd listen to on its own, even if it wasn't associated with ReZero, not to mention- Oh, interesting. That in Ram's oh, eyes. Yeah. Emilia's eyes, Super was there. Even if it wasn't associated- But in Ram's eyes, it's Rosball, but it's a Rosball with the shade. You don't see clearly Roswell, even though every other character, you could see clearly who the character is in their eyes. Aided with ReZero, not to mention lyrically, it fits perfectly with the current themes of season two. Visually, however, this opening was about what I expected. The contrast between ice and fire was a nice addition, knowing that Amelia's overarching wish is to melt the ice in Elier Forest, they mm -hmm. repeatedly showed Subaru with a fiery background, symbolically implying that he's the one who's gonna make Amelia's wish come true. Really? Could this not be symbolic of Subaru walking into the depth of hell because he's suffering so much? Are we both calling the curtain as blue for bullshit reasons when at the end of the day it's just the color blue? Maybe it's both, man. The transitions and effects were at least on par with those of the previous ReZero openings, although it kind of felt like there was something missing. The first opening had those hidden frames you could only see if you paused right at the perfect moment. The second opening felt like the song and visuals were literally made for each other. And the third opening really felt like Echidna herself was presenting the episode to us, the viewers. Through the butterfly shit? 
Maybe. But this fourth opening was just an opening. A good opening, that's for sure, but it didn't really stand out to me the same way the others did. Ooh. I'll give it some time to- Oh no, this opening is mid, I fear. Throw on me, but at the moment, I'd sadly say this is probably my least favorite ReZero opening. Well, we know how the season ends. Opening, although it definitely isn't a bad opening by a long shot. While we're on the subject of music though, I thought this entire episode played the perfect soundtrack for every moment. There's been so much action recently, I haven't really had much time to talk about the music, but it's always been one of my favorite things about ReZero, and they continued to absolutely nail it every single episode. But let's go ahead and talk about the episode. Two minutes and 30 seconds of padding the fucking review analysis with production value bullshit. Fraudulent anti-tubers! No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not mad, but I do find it funny how in those chibi videos, dude, a lot of people, like, they don't talk about the lore. It's just about, oh my god, the music! The pacing, the animation, it was so crisp! Look at the art! Wow, voice acting! By then, it's already five minutes into the fucking review that's seven minutes long, then it's the two minute rest. You're just talking about the actual show at the Lord. So I was like, come on, man. Fortuna's death was absolutely terrifying, yet okay. a really good scene. In fact, I thought it was even scarier than it was in the novel. Betelgeuse finally snapped and became another one of Pandora's pawns, concluding possibly the most tragic backstory in all of ReZero. That's right. The man that killed his own loved one then gaslit Subaru in episode 15 season 1 saying, You killed her. You killed her with your own hands! I think that juice, um, it, it, it was also, today's episode was called, or, you know, last episode was actually called The Day That Betrugus Laughed, right? Actually, it was the previous episode before this because ReZero has a habit of where the title hints at what's gonna happen the next episode, just like the Maiden in the Gospel and became another one of Pandora's pawns, concluding possibly the most tragic backstory in all of ReZero. I do want to go back and start chronologically, though. Okay. First things first, this Key. episode showed us another possible limitation to Pandora's authority. She can't use it to open the seal. That's right, and we talked about how that was because this whole area is like outside the laws of the regular world. And she can't use it to force Amelia to open it for her. Mm -hmm. She did use her authority to trick Betelgeuse into- That's right, she tricked Betelgeuse, right? And there's also these moments where she seemingly dies, but I don't think that's her dying and then returning to life by rewriting the script. I think these are just illusions, which makes me even- Schizo theory about how like, what about the previous episodes? Did Regulus actually attack Pandora? Was that really what we saw? Was that an illusion of Pandora? Because, like, again, with the existence of a character like this, where she can seemingly just manipulate reality as she see fits, nothing we see anymore can now be fucking what we see. It's just this bullshit of, since when were you under the assumption that I actually died there, or that was me getting hurt? You were just tripping. It's like, wow, Genjutsu time. ...to killing Fortuna, but the fact that she had to trick him implies that she wasn't able to force him to do so against his will. Mm. I think it might take us a long time to figure out the ex Gaslight, smokes and mirrors, right? I don't know exactly how she's able to just send Regulus back. I think that is truly her authority of vanity. But beyond... Uh, uh, well, authority... Authorities... There can be multiple powers, right? Invisible hand is one symbol power of the authority of Sloth. But Juice also has the other one that wasn't shown in the anime. I, f I forget it was what, what it was actually called. Sloth now or some shit. But basically in authority, there can be multiple powers. But she can like tell Regulus to go home and he won't be there anymore. She can also just like do Genjutsu bullshit, so it's seeming like you slapped, you know, Pandora, but it was actually Amelia. You stabbed Pandora, but it was actually Fortuna. Exact mechanics of her authority, but if you guys have any ideas, I'd be curious to read them in the comment section below. Some Just like Best shit. Girl did a couple episodes ago, Pandora also refers to Amelia as a witch's daughter. Mm -hmm. At this point- And no longer does the witch's daughter seems to be not just like a, a gaslighting or like- Amelia even says I'm the daughter of the witch, right? I don't think this is a self-proclaimed thing anymore because the cut content also implied that like uh, Pandora says something about how the witch's progeny, meaning Amelia's uh, descendants, right? Amelia is a descendant of a witch. They're all fated to repeat the same thing of- slumbering because of the nature of their blood and being like locked away or sealed away. I think the anime has made it painfully obvious that Satella is Amelia's mother. But the problem is- There's no way. It's way too fucking basic. It's, it's way too basic, right? It, it, there seems- it, I want to believe that Satella may be Amelia's like twin sister. That'd be crazy. 
Satellite like, could be like a future because like there's also time fucking travel ship you know embedded in this story. Maybe there's like a version of Amelia from the future or the past. I I don't really know, but Satellite like, being Amelia's mom is way too basic of an answer for a show like ReZero, unless Tape's intention was to obfuscate the show with so much mysteries that the most obvious answer was actually the answer. And people are too busy thinking in like way beyond in like the schizo theory crafting when it was truly the most simple answer was the answer. Is that's impossible. Remember that Fortuna's brother, Amelia's dad, was mm -hmm. an elf. Well, Amelia is a half-elf, yep. and the only way to make a half-elf is for is an elf to fuck a human. Human. But Satella isn't a human, so if Amelia's dad- Exactly, Satella is a half-elf, right? How could that make sense? Unless maybe fucking Amelia's- Maybe uh, Fortuna's brother is actually not a complete brother, but some sort of half-brother, right? Because, like, think about it. Garfield and Frederica- they're siblings in the beginning, but it's like, haha, gotcha, motherfucker. Actually, different dad or some shit. Uh, therefore, fucking quarter blood, half blood, right? I forget exactly how it worked, but quarter blood, half blood, and uh, some bullshit like that could also happen in this show. I fucked a witch. It couldn't have been Satella. And the only other human witches that resemble Amelia even remotely are Echidna, Echidna. and Pandora. So what I've concluded is that Amelia's father is one lucky son of a bitch. And maybe, maybe it's interesting to theorize that Amelia's father is also Puck. Why? I don't know. Fortuna said Leah once in the episode, and I was like, haha, it must be Amelia's, um, Fortuna's Puck! But it doesn't make sense because Puck existed pre-Calamity based on his dialogue about how Satel has half the shadows when talking to Juice, right? But if we're going to take that whole Leah shit, maybe we could assume that Fortuna's brother is way older than Fortuna. Hundreds of years older. I don't, I don't know. And then Fortuna's dad. Sorry. Uh, Fortuna's brother. You know, Amelia's dad is actually Puck. I'm willing to entertain that thought. His father is one lucky son of a bitch. His sister, on the other hand, wasn't very lucky at all. Betelgeuse uses the authority of Sloth to kill what he thought was Pandora, but ended up Psych. being the love of his life. And ha <laughs> ha. Some eyes and shit from Bleach. Since when were you under the assumption that I was Pandora? Psych, it was Fortune all the time. Dead. Don't do drugs. This particular event, combined with his incompatibility with the Sloth Witch Factor, initiated the rebirth of Betelgeuse that spawned the villain we got to meet in Season mm -hmm. 1. This episode officially began Betelgeuse's descent into madness. Yeah, and right now, remember how in Episode 15, Betelgeuse like, gatekept Subaru saying, like, you're not truly insane. I'm truly insane. You're like Bronze Elo, bro. But I said, I think, I think I said back then too, it's like, I bet Juice is never just like this insane. I bet that he was also just as fucking like crying and just like hopeless as Subaru during that cave moment. And you see it right here. That's exactly it. ...and revealed to us that Pandora is single-handedly responsible for at least three of the most tragic backstories in the history of anime. We I think that Pandora gaslit Satella and made her turn into the Witch of Envy to consume half the world. Maybe Pandora did some illusion bullshit too, and uh, what was the leading theory right now? For me at least, is that Subaru is some sort of person that is perhaps a past... Uh, I don't know, maybe there, there was like a different version of him back in the day that Satala fell in love with, and somehow Pandora did some illusion bullshit and had him killed, and then gaslit Satala into saying, The world did this, you need to fucking destroy the world. I don't know. We also got to see a glimpse of Amelia's true power. Attacking Pandora, Amelia loses control, entering her awakened form, which allows her to create ice that never melts. One of my favorite scenes this episode was when Amelia calmly takes Fortuna's hairpin and mm -hmm. then turns to Pandora, ready to Die. unleash her full power. This first attack was a sped up version of Amelia's Flowers of Ice ability. Ice flower. Amelia creates flowers made of ice on the wounds on living beings. See, that's the thing. Wounds on living beings. In Frozen Bond, we clearly saw an injury. We saw an injury on the bandits. Anyone else? They had a cut, then the ice bloom would come out, then it would suck the blood out. In this example, seemingly it just shows up out of nowhere because Pandora is covered in her clothes. And I'm assuming that she has no injury, but it sounds like she must have an injury then, right? If we're going to assume that whatever we're seeing right now in Frozen Bond is exactly the same, this shit, she has an injury that we cannot see. This first attack was a sped up version of Amelia's Flowers of Ice ability, which absorbs her target. 
What else is there? Uh, it sucks the host's life force and bloom by sucking the host's blood. Seven years ago, Amelia couldn't control the affected area and stopped it properly. Puck had to use his powers to terminate it, basically. Yeah, it's the Amelia that we've seen up to this point, right? Is a nerfed version of Amelia. In Frozen Bond, we've already seen how powerful she is. Target's blood until they're completely drained. After that, she uses what looks like the fire equivalent of El Huma to create multiple ice spikes and then Ol Huma followed by a freezing spell. Although Damn. this all could have been the spirit arts instead, it's impossible to tell without the incantations. But the most important part was when Amelia entered her awakened form. She never seems to do this on purpose, it really only happens as a last resort when she loses control. At the beginning of season one, Amelia- Yeah, that's what she was implying about, right? I do have a trump card. I thought that this trump card was about like Puck showing up and ending the world right just like we saw in season one but it's more like this awakened form where everyone is gonna get frozen except her said she had a trump card that i initially assumed was puck but looking back now i think she was actually talking about her awakened form so all along emilia was the one that froze the forest and all the elves though it was obviously pandora's fault but the scariest part of this episode was when pandora erased herself from emilia's memories the reason this is so terrifying there's no doubt that her authority of vanity padded out your distorted memories. Um, and you said the memories aren't being deleted, but they're being shuffled around in a way that Amelia cannot perceive, right? It's because it means we have to question the validity of every other character's memory as well. The exactly. That's the thing, bro. With the show like this, already riddled in so much mysteries with like 17 separate fucking layers of assumptions and still we're being gaslit by the author, the existence of Pandora... Does it make the story cheap? Truly, no. It's just, just stop glazing Reserve for a second. Just step back and ask yourself. Do you think a power like this is actually helpful to Reserve? I think that it's definitely a lot more interesting in terms of what they can pull off. Because now, you can't trust anyone's memories. You can't trust exactly what you've seen. Because it could have been all an illusion at the end of the day. By Pandora's powers. Which I think is a bit of bullshit. In terms of what the author is showing to the audience. And then the audience trying to come up with the logic presented and come up with theories. But all that shit can just be rug pulled by saying, It was all cap! Ha <laughs> ha! And it's like, ugh. Is that good writing? Or are you just fucking trolling? And people are glazing this author for being so smart when at the end of the day, he just fucking making shit up with the illusion powers. I think it definitely has to do with like how he's going to use Pandora's powers, right? Obviously, there's good ways of address using it and bad ways of using it. I trust Tape to do a good way of handling it, but now we got to be even more schizo with this show. Like, you thought this show was schizo theory crafting before Pandora, post Pandora now. It's just like, oh my god character's memory as well. Theoretically, Pandora could have roofied every single ReZero character for the past 400 years and we would literally have no way of knowing. I strongly believe that Pandora is responsible for a lot more than just the conflict in Amelia's past. And I think that Pandora is responsible for the Great Calamity and Gaslit Satella. And the only reason we haven't heard about it is because she always erases herself from memory. Mm-hmm. And I've heard people talk about how gluttony controls the whale and, you know, they got rid of people's memories to kind of, like, um, hide the cult fucking uh, actions, right? But Pandora should too now. I don't know. This is going to be crazy. She always erases herself from memory. But after all the tragedy packed into this episode, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. Amelia finally passed her trial, and it looks like she'll be freeing the sanctuary in due time. Woo! I don't think the second trial will be much of a problem for Amelia. Yeah, Echidna also said like the second, the next two trials should be easy for you, so I'm just crossing my fingers that we can just fucking... Well, I don't want to rush it, but it's like, bro, we're running out of fucking time. We got only a couple episodes left. We got to still save the mansion. Yeah, Bico. because remember, you're only supposed to see one unthinkable present, but because of Subaru's ability, the second trial was uniquely impossible for him specifically. What I'm worried about is the third trial. Emilia overcame her past, and I expect her to overcome the present too. But how will she react to the, to future? the future? And more importantly, how will I react to the future? The third. I can confidently say that the future will not be shown to us and it'll be something that Amelia will not talk about because if they did, then Toppy would give us more answers, right? Because like, think about it meta-wise, like, is it a smart idea for Toppy to show us the future? Fuck no, right?
unless it's going to bring in more questions and for us the theory, because I just feel like any time there's potential for us to get answers, Tapi just does whatever is possible to just, just limit that, just remove that shit. How will I react to the future? The third trial is something I really can't wait to see, because if it's gonna show Amelia the future, then it might reveal a lot about what direction the ReZero story is headed. Some people were also saying that like, uh... Like, you see that in, in, in Lugunica, right, at the top, there's always this castle thing. That's not Roswell's mansion though, right? Can someone confirm that? I always thought like Roswell's mansion was like this big castle thing at the top. Can someone confirm that right now? Is that Roswell's mansion or not? That's the royal castle? Got it. Now, the theory is like in break time, where Echidna used to live with fucking Biko and Juice used to visit the fucking castle above the skies. You think that could be it? Do you, th do you think this could be it? I don't know. It's something to think about. It, it, there's, there's nothing... The, the only fucking similar thing is the vague fucking structure of this thing. I don't know. This episode ended with Roswell being confronted by the three idiots, and apparently Otto's existence was so insignificant that Roswell's gospel didn't even mention him. But That's so mean, though. Was it truly just that? That... Ro that Otto is so inc that irre irrelevant that no one foresaw this coming? Or is Otto supposed to be like an unknown variable because he is like an outlier? Something that's not insignificant but hidden from within from the grimoire as well. I don't know. It feels kind of mean to just like denounce Otto as an insignificant character. But what if it was even more cool of like how he was like the chosen one to be hidden from the tomb of wisdom and fucking... <laughs> The grimoire, I don't know. But Otto's role this season was essential in turning Garfield into an ally and establishing Subaru's confidence. So because of Otto, the plot was able to diverge from what was written in Roswell's gospel, and that's why Subaru's now asking him to surrender. The final line of this episode, though, is referring to something we haven't- Otto is- Otto is, uh, Pandora. Yes, o Otto is Pandora. Yep. But, but here's the thing, that sounds fucking retarded, right? It does. But it's now within the realm of possibility. You know? This power just lets you just, it's, it's, it's unlikely, it's extremely unlikely, but it's not impossible. That's the fucking thing about Pandora, which I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing been shown yet. The true reason the sanctuary was created is actually something we were supposed to see like three episodes ago, but it looks like White Fox wants to adapt that. The emotional flashback? Why does that matter? All that was made up too. You can do anything with this power. All that bullshit. Like, soul of the language? Who gives a fuck? Pandora made that shit up. You know? Like, like, like. Everything with the power of illusion rewriting reality, it's, it's, you can just do that. Material out of order. I highly doubt they would skip over something as important as that, so I'm assuming they're gonna show it next episode. I really don't think you nerf- And then? You wanna know the craziest shit is? Pandora herself doesn't exist. Do you get where I'm going with this? Sure, now we're schizo theory crafting about how everything we see from other people could be Pandora or Pandora's powers. One could take a step back, take a step back out of the box and assume that Pandora herself doesn't exist and it's a proxy of what we're seeing. And there's someone else puppeteering this illusion, this unknown being known as Pandora. You know what I mean? That's, that's the thing with this power. It's the power of bullshittery. Nervous novel readers have anything to worry about, although considering what happened to the promised Neverland, I can't really blame you for being anxious. This episode was a very good adaptation though, I didn't notice that much cut content, although a detail I would have liked them to emphasize was the fact that Pandora had actually been controlling the lesser spirits that yep. led Amelia to the seal. It wasn't anything hugely important, but I thought it was at least worth mentioning. Fortuna's <laughs> death followed by Juice's reaction was definitely the highlight for me. I think it's obvious where most of this episode's budget went. 
The Roswell conversation at the end kind of looked a bit goofy. Com <laughs> the frames, yeah. I guess it's not that important, right? But the I who gives a f I honestly don't care about this. Like it's 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 a very insignificant uh blunder that does not matter to me in my experience of the anime. But if the, if the if the art could be better for sure, I would welcome it. Fee compared to the rest of the episode, but I'm not going to complain. I mean, we've been getting 30-minute episodes every week and White Fox is clearly going above and beyond by making this a truly amazing adaptation. Ten out of ten. Oh, and just as a reminder for any anime onlys out there, I don't recommend closely analyzing the new opening or really just openings in general cuz they tend to spoil a lot of future events. Yes, there sir. were a couple things in this new opening I chose not to mention to avoid spoilers. So oh, a kidna speaks Spanish? No, <laughs> no, it's a kidna PR. There's a separate account. There's a Brazilian echidna fan that basically just translates everything echidna says into, you know, this language. To opening, I chose Portuguese, my bad. Not to mention to avoid spoilers, so I'm not saying to skip it, but just try not to pay too close attention. Well, assuming they even play it again. Of course, this episode gets a 10 out of 10 from Woo! me, and I know a lot of you guys are asking about the Greed If story. I'm gonna be re-uploading it soon. Let's right go. now it's available to channel members while I do a bit of editing, but I will be making it public soon. If you guys enjoyed this video- I'm surprised that Echidna did not talk about the existence of a second key holder. Well, I don't know if they exist, but Pandora mentioned that it's not simply Amelia that could, you know, um, just manifest a key. Someone else could also. And then there was some additional stuff about how Pandora was technically like protecting Amelia from Fortuna because Fortuna didn't know Amelia was around when she used her icicle attack, which I don't think is that big of a deal. What's super important here? Did we learn anything new in this one that we did not learn from any cut content other than Echidna's like memes? I don't really think so. Sometimes they both have very interesting things that each other don't really talk about. But for the most part, I am kind of like half-half on Pandora's existence and how she can add to the story. Of course, you know, even, even the nature of time travel can make a story very wonky and bullshittery. Like... People glaze Nagatsuki Tape for being an au amazing author up until this point, right? and now beyond this point with Pandora existing. I wonder how people will feel about like just the power of fucking Genjutsu and just like everything you saw was just a lie. You got gaslit. I don't know. It's all about the execution of the ideas at the end of the day. Hopefully, there's a, an amazing way to do it. And my leading theory is right now: Puck is Amelia's dad. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We're, we're literally going off of that one simple moment where Fortuna called Amelia Leah. And then it's just like, oh yeah! The Fortune is Puck. No, maybe the brother's Puck. Maybe they both called her Leah. And Puck mentions about how he, wasn't, he used to be hairless and didn't have short limbs apparently in the anime. And then another thing is... I don't know how the fuck Minerva is associated with Amelia stuff. But apparently later on... More Minerva content will be shown in this season, so we'll kind of hold on to that one. But that's it for me. Please go give Mr. Echidna a like in the video. Here's the link. And see you next time.